We love you. We applaud you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We exalt you, Father, and we extol you. Thank you for making us to see the light of this day. We don't take it for granted, Father. We appreciate you for what you have been doing in our lives since the beginning of this year. Today is the 153rd day of the year. Thus far, you have helped us, Father. We declare Ebenezer. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word, the inerrant word of, the word of, of, of God, the word that you have magnified above your name, your word that will never return to you void. Father, as we want to go into your word this day, Father, go with us in Jesus' name. Give us the spirit of expression and give us the spirit of comprehension in the mighty name of Jesus. Open our eyes of understanding. Illuminate the eyes of our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your word fall onto the good cell of our hearts in Jesus' name. And let your word produce bountiful harvest in our life. And the grace for us to be the doers and not just hear us alone, Father, grant us in Jesus' name. If there's any power or any spirit that wants to cause destruction at this material time, we bind in Jesus' name. We send such strange power into captivity in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good all the time. I want to declare Calvary greetings to you all in the excellent name of God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. And I want to welcome each and every one of us to this um, Thanksgiving and Holy Communion service. As you know that every first Sunday in this church, we come together to just um, you know, give glory and honor to God and to thank him and to appreciate him for all what he's been doing in our lives. Hallelujah. Today is such an opportunity to just say, Daddy, thank you. Daddy, we appreciate you for what you have been doing and for what you are still going to do. Uh, as we had earlier, today is a first food for us. Hallelujah. And you know that every first in this church, we just come and honor the Lord for it. And I've always told you that whatever you appreciate God for, appreciates in your own life. You know, when you say first fruit, it means that it's a second fruit, that it means that it's a third one. And there are others. So when you celebrate and honor God with your first fruit, it tells us that other fruits are on their way. So that is why I rest my case that you are still going to celebrate much, many more first fruit in this land of the living. In the mighty name of Jesus. You see, one of the ways to actually uh, enforce and, um, you know, uh, make the promise of God for your life this month to be fulfilled is um, when you honor the Lord. You know, you, as you remember, this year is our year of divine overflow. One of the ways you can make that to happen in your life, one of the ways you can actualize it in your life, is to honor the Lord with your possessions. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, and the first fruit of all, say all, all your increase. Today is, is part of the all. Hallelujah. Of all your increase. And the Bible tells us if when we do that, what will happen in verse 10? It says so that your barns will be filled with plenty. You want, you know, abundance in your life. Honor the Lord with your possessions. Your possession is not just only in terms of dollar and cents. A lot of people, when they hear possession, they think it's about money. It's not all, all about money. How about your time? How about your talent? You know, those are still part of your possessions. You know, so that your vase will overflow. I pray that your cup will overflow with blessings in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So we are here this very day to just sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. According to our Psalm, Psalm 147, verse 7, it says, sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. That's why we are here. To sing unto him, to praise him, to, to declare his glory, you know, with thanksgiving. And sing praises on, on, you know, on the harp to our God. Hallelujah. Because God has been so good to us, we are here this very day to declare his glory, to declare Ebenezer, thus far, Lord, you have helped us. We are not where we are just, you know, today because, you know, uh, because of us, because we are good or that, just because it's the Lord's doing. We are here to fulfill scriptures. The Bible says in Psalm 66, verse 7, Eight. He said, oh, bless the Lord, oh, you people. He said, bless the Lord, you people, all of us. He said, we should bless the Lord and make the voice of his praise to be heard. Hallelujah. 
If inanimate object like the firmament will declare God's glory, you and I, we ought to be declaring the glory of God for all what God has been doing in our lives. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us the reason why we should do so in verse 9. It said, for the Lord has kept our soul among the living. That you are alive today, you should not take it for granted, people of God. He said, God has kept our souls among the living and does not allow, God does not permit our feet to slip. It doesn't allow us to fumble. It doesn't allow us to, you know, to, 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 to stumble or fall. To God alone be that glory. Praise the Lord. This morning, we are here to disregard all our complaints and discover gratitude. I know we have challenges in our life. Nobody's immune to challenges. We all go through one thing or the other. But this morning, I want to just encourage you as you have come to his presence. The Bible says, enter into his courts, I mean, you know, into his gates with thanksgiving. Psalm 100 verse 4. As you have made it into the presence of God this very morning, please disregard your complaint. Hallelujah. Let us focus on our blessing. I want us to disregard, uh, uh, you know, all those issues, all those troubles, you know, the challenges we have been going through. And let us focus on the blessings that God has been bestowing upon us. Praise the Lord. Because I've always said in this church, if we can pause to think, if you can take a moment, if you can take a second to think, you'll be able to thank. Hallelujah. You know, if you can just, you know, f you know just focus on the, on, on the good things that God has been doing in your life. No wonder the psalmist says, oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Psalm 100, verse uh, 103. He said, uh, 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 I know that is within me. He said, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and forget not. Psalm 103, verse 1, and forget not all his benefits. And forget not. If you can take a moment to focus on the benefit of God upon your life and forget those challenges, we all go to challenges. Even the head of states, the presidents, they go to challenges. Hallelujah. Nobody's immune. Amen. So let us this morning just focus on the blessing. Let us count our blessings this very day. I remember one man said, you know, he was complaining that he had no shoes until he saw a man without legs. Hallelujah. He was still complaining, oh, I have no shoe, I have no sneaker, I have no this. Until some one man who has no leg. So if the man who has no leg, even if he has shoes, where is he going to wear it? Hallelujah. So we are here to just reflect on the goodness of God in our life. Praise the Lord. We are here to pause to think and count our blessings. Think of the job we are holding. You know? Think of how many people who are out there who are looking for a job. Hallelujah. Think of the fact that God has been protecting you of the job. He has not allowed somebody to lie about you. He has not allowed some staff members to collude against you and get you fired. You know, God has gotten your back on the job. I want you to think of that for a second. Look at that accident you, are, you miraculously, you know, avoided. And you say, how did that happen anyway? Hallelujah. Think of the fact that your children are doing well. Think of the fact some of them have actually graduated. Some are still going to graduate. Think of the fact that there's no cause for alarm, no emergency concerning your children. Hallelujah. Think of the fact that you can still maintain your sanity in, this, in all the chaos that is going all over the place. That we are not in the mental asylum today, that we are not in the prison, that we are, we are not on the hospital bed. Are we better than the people who are there? It is the Lord's doing. That is why we need to come back and show our appreciation unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I can go on and tell you, you know, Bible says, Bless the Lord God who is our God of our salvation. Psalm 68 verse 19. Who daily loads us with benefit on daily basis, on continual basis, on continuous basis, God loads us with benefits. The benefit of good health. You don't value your head until, until something happens to you, or there's a challenge somewhere. A little boil can cost you know, so much you know, in one's life. You know, a, a professor, a friend of mine, you know, I was told he went for a very simple procedure. It's a very simple procedure. I'm not going to go into the details because I don't want any of you to second guess. You know, and when they told me what happened, ultimately, 
he passed on to glory. And I said, what procedure? Oh, they said something that has to do with it. Oh, okay. I said, okay. Because if you understand the anatomy of the face, you know, there's, you know, a dangerous place. I, will, I want to say this so that you understand. Any infection in that place, and that you tap it can go into your, into your brain, cavernous sinus. Imagine how many times you have had boy in your nose tree. And God protected you. I'm not putting him down as my friend. I'm just telling you the reality of life. That you should not take anything for granted. Hallelujah. You know, I want you to understand that God's highest gift in our life deserves our gratitude. We need to be grateful to the Lord. God's giving deserves our thanksgiving. We should always thank him. We lay down, for example, last night, the Bible said we were awoke. Why? Because the Lord God sustained us. If not for his sustenance in our life. You know? I want us to repl- reflect on all this. And especially, it was a bit mind-boggling for me. You know? Because in fairness, I was telling my wife, I said, I didn't even want to do this, you know. But I just, you know, was just lying down. God was telling me. He said, this month... It's a month of divine solution. If just for the promise of divine solution for you and I for this month, is enough reason for me to thank the Lord. Because that's an all-encompassing promise. It affects every aspect of our life. And I began to say, I said, what scripture would fit into this? I look, look, look. I said, God, every page of the Bible is you solving one problem or the other for, your, for the elect. It means this very month, whatever challenge I see that confronted you will receive divine solution. Amen. I said God is going to intervene for you. Amen. He will grant you a lasting solution in the mighty name of Jesus. If God would take care of the issue of infertility, in the issue of barrenness in the life of Sarah, if God would take care of the issue of bondage in the life of the Israelites, if the Lord God will bring water out of the rock for the Israelites, if the Lord God will provide for the widow of Sarephat, if the Lord God will provide with the widow with oil, I am declaring to you this very month, this is your month of divine solution. In any area of your life, if there's any challenge anywhere, I want you to hold on to God. Because it is written, Genesis chapter 18 verse 14, is there anything hard for the Lord? Your miracle shall not be hard for the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. This is our month. If just because of that promise, it's enough to say, Daddy, thank you. I have told you, I've given some examples to this church. If I promise, I'm a human being. I'm just a mere mortal like you. If I promise to give you $100, the next thing you say is say thank you. I've not given you the hundred dollar. It me that I can change my mind the next one minute. When I remember that the hundred dollar I needed to, I need to do something with it. I will tell you you can wait till other time. But God never operates like that. His promises they are yea and they are amen. Are you a people of God? If I ask you, how many times should we even thank this God? You know. In the Old Testament, in First Chronicles 23, verse 30, when uh, David, one of the last words of David to the Levites, you might say, I'm not a Levite, but I want you to understand, according to Revelation chapter 1, verse 6, God has said that he has made you priests and kings unto him. So you are Levites, so to speak. He told the Levites, he said the Levites should stand every morning, say every morning. What do they have, what do, they have to do? To thank and praise the Lord. They have to thank, they have to stand up every morning. They wake up, they thank the Lord and praise the Lord every morning. And likewise, say likewise. That is what they did in the morning. They've got to do it in the evening. And likewise at evening. So you may ask me, how many times should I thank the Lord? And at least from there, you will understand what I'm saying. You've got to thank God at least twice a day. At least, some of you take medication, BD, right? Twice a day. But then, let me tell you, it's even better. The psalmist says in Psalm 119, verse 164, he says, seven times will I bless you. Seven times a day I praise you. Seven times. Hallelujah. Which means the, the number of times has, you know, has gone up. Seven times a day. 
People of God, if you really know what God is doing in your life, seven times is not even enough. How many of you have driven on the same road that somebody else has driven and that person got to an accident? And you go scot free on scale. Hallelujah. In the New Testament, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20, it said, Giving thanks unto God. How many times? Always. Always. At, that is, at all times. Give God praise. Give Him thanks. Hallelujah. Because if not for Him, if not for God in our life. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was sharing a scripture with some people on Friday. If not for God. In the book of, ne uh, in the book of Esther, chapter 9, beginning from verse 1. I'm not going to explain now. I don't have the time. He said, now in the 12th month, that's the month of Ada. I told them it was the month of March at that time. On the 13th day, the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed. The decree that the king had made because of the you know, conspiracy of Ammon. Ammon wanted to destroy the Jews and Mordecai. Just because when he was promoted, Mordecai will not genuflect for him, he will not koto for him, he will not bow down for him because Mordecai, Mordecai understood the fact that God said, thou shalt not bow down, thou shalt not have another God other than me. He didn't bow down for Ammon. Ammon got mad. He got upset. And he wanted to destroy the Jews just because of that. And I described it at that time, it would have been the first holocaust. But the Bible says that same day that the enemy had planned, you know, to execute that decree, on the day that the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them, the Bible said the opposite occurred. The bad plans, the evil plan that the enemy planned for you, God didn't allow it to happen in your life. God allowed it to happen in the life of the enemy. Bible talks of God, Isaiah 44, 25, frustrating the tokens of the liars, driving the vanas smart. People of God, if God can open our eyes and let us see what God has been doing on our behalf, Isaiah 64, verse 4, Bible says God asks on behalf of those who ask hallelujah to him. Those things that God has accomplished, those things that God has done on your behalf, how God has been turning the table against the enemy concerning your life. Every time that the enemy wants to destroy you, and God will say, no, touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm, you'll be able to turn the Lord. You'll be able to turn this God. Hallelujah. God has been so good to us. He's been doing awesome, awesome, awesome things in our life. That is why I always encourage people, based on Psalm 92, verse 2, let us come to his presence. Every time you come to the presence of God, come with thanksgiving. Every time you come to, the, you know, to, to God's presence, Psalm 95, verse 2, every time you come to God's presence, the Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And it's cause we pray. Let us always come. Let's be thankful. Let's be thankful to God. God is, has been doing so much in our life. A man of God says something powerful, and he asked rhetorically one day. He said, Is it not lamentable that men will never thank God for the countless blessings he confers upon them? And they remember him only to complain of the evils which they have brought upon themselves. Did you hear that? They won't thank God for all the blessings. The Bible says God daily loads us with, 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 his, with benefits. They won't thank him for those benefits. But the trouble they in, themselves brought upon themselves, they will start complaining to, you know, to him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This man went on to say, an unthankful and complaining spirit is an abiding sin against God. When you are thankful, when you are ungrateful, the Bible says, it's a, this man said it, and you know, the Bible actually says it's a form of sin. It's a form of ungodliness. It's a form of unrighteousness. How do I mean? In the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 
18 and 21, when God was speaking, he said, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all, say all, all ungodliness and unrighteousness. The wrath of God is being revealed against all of God's unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Go to verse 21 because of our time. He said, because these people, they knew God. They know God. The people who are practicing, who are practicing unrighteous acts, the people who are practicing you know, ungodliness, they know God, but they deny him. They deny his knowledge. They deny his existence. They, some of them call themselves atheists. Some of them are just reprobate. He said, although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. They don't honor God in their life. They arrogate to themselves their success. They arrogate to themselves whatever they have. They don't know, listen, they are like pigs. You know, who is under the oak tree? Who is eating acorn? Not looking up where the acorn is forming from. He said they, they denied God. He said, look at one of the things they do. No, why? Thankful. They were not thanking God. Not thanking God is one of the signs of ungodliness. It's one of the signs of unrighteousness. And the Bible says that the wrath of God will visit such. So when God does you a favor, people of God, please go ahead and say, Daddy, thank you. Do you know when uh, Paul, this same Paul, wrote 2 Timothy chapter 3? He said in verse 1, he was telling us about, you know, that, you know, in the last days, and we are in the last days, people of God. He said, perilous time would come. You are going to hear a lot of stuff. All those things you are seeing on WhatsApp, they are just the beginning. It's the beginning of the end. He said, in the last day, the perilous time would will come. What are the signs of the perilous times? Look at it, verse 2. It said men will be lovers of themselves, homosexuals. Men will be loving men. It's one of the signs of the perilous time. It said lovers of money. Ah, are you kidding? People kill now for money. It said boasters. They boast. Ah, have you seen my latest car? Money that they have stolen from the coffers of the government. They used to buy money, uh, buy cars, and buy buildings, and they will be boasting. He said they are proud, they are blasphemous, they are disobedient to parents. Sign of the perilous time. Look at the next one: unthankfulness. When people are not thankful, they are no longer thanking God for the blessings of God in their life. It's one of the signs of the perilous time that the Bible speaks about. Praise the Lord. I pray that we shall not partake in it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know how prone we seem to forget the good that life, you know, knows. I only remember and brood over the evil. To forget the joys, you know, you know, the joys and, and, and think only of the sorrows of life. You know, this man kept on saying to forget thankfulness and remember only to complain. Hmm. I told you, I said that man said I was sad. When I had no shoe, only to see a man who had no legs. People come, thank God for what you have. Amen. You know, I don't know this morning if I have any grateful believer in the house. I don't know if I have, you know, other witnesses in the house who want to just, you know, do away with any form of, any sense of entitlement. I work for it. I went to college. I studied hard. You know? Forget all those sense of attachment because I can tell you millions and millions of people who are smarter than you in college. I can show you millions of people who are more hardworking than you and they didn't get what you have. Are you happy for God? Forget about sense of entitlement. Forget about a critical spirit. A critical spirit will never be appreciative of anything. They will always be criticizing Hallelujah. Set aside pride. And if you are, you know, such a believer this day that you have set aside the sense of attachment of pride and critical spirit, I just want to honor God and say, Daddy, thank you. Ebenezer, thus far, you have helped me. 
Because when I came from yonder, you didn't bring any house here. You probably came, you know, with the clothes on, the, on your back. And maybe with 25 cents. But here you are today. Your children, children they have graduated from college. They graduated from college. Think of it, people of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know if I have such a believer in the house this morning who wants to thank God for his faithfulness. Don't you know what the Bible says? It says, through the mercy of God, we have not been consumed. Lamentation 3, 22 to 23. For his compassion faileth not. They are new. Our phone, every morning. Great is his faithfulness. People of God, every time you open your eye in the morning, the first thing that you come out of your mouth is to say, Daddy, thank you so very much. That's Psalm 92 in verse 1. It said, it is good to give God thanks. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. It is good. Look at the reason. It said, we should thank God in the morning, verse 2, for his faithfulness, you know, for his loving kindness in the morning. The loving kindness of God. The word loving kindness is the word mercy. You thank God for his mercy because if God had not been merciful to us, the mercy of God. If God, you know, has been dealing with us the way he dealt with the people in the Old Testament, you touch the ark of God that is trying to stumble, pam, you are dead. Or you come to the church, you didn't tell the truth concerning your tithe and offering, pam, you are dead. Imagine, 911, fire, 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 everybody, you know. If you don't believe, go and ask Ananias and Sapphira. They didn't force them to set their land. They so they want to be like others. They are hypocrites. How many people danced forward this morning and they didn't put the exact amount in the, in the offering? And God said, okay, because you have done that, okay, it is much worried right now. Think of that, people of God. But it's mercy. Say, I will have mercy upon you. I will have mercy. I will have compassion upon you. I will have compassion. Bible says, it is not of you that wins or he that runs, but of God who shows mercy. If only just for the mercy, for you not getting the punishment that you deserve, that God has not dealt with us, you know, in accordance to our sin and iniquity. Ah, we need to thank this God. We need to thank him. How about his compassion? He knows our frame. He knows we are from dust. He knows about our weaknesses. He has pity upon us. Hallelujah. His faithfulness. We are all individually and corporately expression of the faithfulness of God. The Bible says it's cancer of old. They are faithfulness and they are true. Isaiah 25 verse 1. If not for the faithfulness of God towards you and I. Amen. We could have lost our mind. We could have been sick on the bed. But he said, I'm the Lord God that he led thee. He said, you will never borrow. He said, he will supply your need according to his riches in glory. Has God not been doing that? I mean, let's be true and be honest to ourselves. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's why we are here this morning to say, Daddy, thank you so very much. Consider the fact that today is the 153rd day of the year. It's like we just started January. We're already in June. It remains 212 days for this year to come to an end. Hallelujah. God has been so good to us, people of God. He's been preserving our lives, protecting us, providing for us. Hallelujah. Imagine if God had bottled up his oxygen. I told you, say, you're going to pay money to, 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 to have oxygen. In China, I told you, you know, there was a time they were selling bottled air because the air was polluted. So only the rich people can buy, you know, pure oxygen. You, you have not paid your bill. You have not even paid your rising bill. So you are, how are you going to be able to pay for oxygen? It's going to be a scale of preference. Which one do I pay first? But God didn't do that. The same, you know, air, oxygen you are breathing is the same air the so-called rich people are breathing into. Hallelujah. God is good. 
A lot of people have gone once in a while. You have to reflect on the, on the fact that if they, if they are not being the Lord who was on your side, you've got to reflect. Psalm 124. If it had not been the Lord, verse 1, hallelujah, if, you know, he said, let Israel now say. You need to say to yourself, keep on going. If you are not the Lord, it was, when men rose up against you, do you know how many enemies you have? Do you know how many people are plotting your downfall? Do you know how many people are counting the number of years you have been in America? Do you know how many people are sitting on Mars using voodoo, black magic, you know, using hex against you, charms, incantations, sorcery, the other things against you? But God said there shall be no sorcery against Israel. Said there shall be no shame against Jacob. Numbers 23 23. He said, Now it must be said, see what God has done. I mean, I want you to understand what the enemies are planning against you. That God had not allowed to materialize. I, I just showed you that scripture. He said, when the enemy of Israel, when they intended to overpower, he said the opposite, the very opposite of what was planned against them happened. In other words, the Israelites now overpowered their enemies. Only God can do that. Only God can do that. Hallelujah. If it had not been the Lord. Amen. We have, been outside. we have so many reasons to thank God. So, so many reasons. If I continue to enumerate, we are not going to live here today. Amen. But all I know is this. In everything, the Bible says, give thanks. First Thessalonians 5.18. In everything, give thanks. Because this is the will of God for you and I in Christ Jesus. In everything. No matter what the situation might be. That is why... I, I don't know where I got this. It's, I said, in the happy moment, thank him. Did you hear me? In the happy moment, thank him. In the busy moment, bless him. In the trying moment, trust him. In the quiet moment, praise him. In all moments, glorify him. Thank the Lord. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God. For you in Christ Jesus. And like I said earlier, uh, Ephesians 5.20, you know, giving, th give thanks to God always for all things. Hallelujah. God is good. I say God is good. Out of all these reasons that we can, you know, we can enumerate to thank God for, one of the reasons I want to visit this very morning, you know, is the mere fact that God has been preserving our lives. That God has been preserving our going out and our coming in. Hallelujah. You know, it's something we just take for granted. That oh, when you drive to work, you are going to come back alive. Who said that? Did you see what happened in Virginia Beach? Didn't they go to work just like you and I would go to work? Did they plan that that day would be the end of their, you know, 12 people already dead. I'm not putting that up. I've sent my condolences to them. I'm just letting you to see the reality of life. But what has God said? Uh, uh, Psalm 121 verse 8. He said, He will preserve your going out and your coming in. First Thessalonians, I believe, maybe it's 2 Th Timothy 4, 18. He said, He would preserve us from all evil. Psalm 91. He said, no evil shall come near our dwelling. Hallelujah. I want you to understand, people, go what God has been doing in your life. Until you begin to realize this, you will not have an appreciation of who God is and what God has been doing in your life. You know, I'm going to just give a brief example and we'll conclude this morning. A man of God, a very, you know, great king, one of the, you know, Righteous king in Israel, After, apart from David, the next one is Ezekiah. Others are just, you know, most of them unrighteous, they will start well, you know. One of the tragedies of Christianity is for somebody to start well and not end well. It is not good for a Christian to put the hand on the plow and look back. They will start well, they will start with reforms and stuff. But give them two or three days, they will start doing nonsense. 
Ezekiah was a righteous king until, you know, he, came, he became ill. Isaiah 38, beginning of verse 1, I believe, he, he, he became very ill, deadly ill. He was having a terminal illness. So much so God sent, you know, prophet Isaiah to him, the son of, you know, uh, Amos. He said, go and tell him, go and tell my, my, my servant, the leader of my people, to set his house right. In order to write your will. You are going to die. You are not going to recover from this sickness. This was God who sent his, you know, his prophet to the, man, to the king. But thank God, the king knew what to do. The king, the Bible said, turned his face to the wall. Most of you didn't understand that. The man wanted privacy. That was why he turned his face to the wall. He wasn't trying to, you know, to, to, you know, to throw a pity party. And he started, he, started, he started praying to the Lord. Verse 2. He prayed to God. How do you handle challenges in your life? What do you do when you face tribulation? What do you do when you face challenges? The man began to recall, he began, he began to recant all the good things he has done to the Lord. He said, Lord, I remember. How many of us can actually go to God and say, God, remember what I've been doing for you? When you have not done nothing anyway. When God will open his book, say, ah, uh -uh. you say I should remember. What do I have to remember? Everything is empty. There is nothing there. But this man went to God. He said, remember how I've served you in truth. How I've served you with a loyal heart. How I've not had any other God besides you. How I've done all those things that are pleasing your sight. He told God. The Bible says he wept bitterly. It's good to cry. Cry to God. Let God see. Sometimes when you cry like that, it's, 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 it's a sign of your faith in him, your confidence in him, that only him, if he doesn't intervene, nothing's going to happen. Hallelujah. He cried to God. The Bible says in the next verse, and God, and what God said to Isaiah, I said, Isaiah, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Go and tell my servant. He's not going to die. I've heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. I'm going to heal you. He said, I'm going to add 15 more years to your years. This same God who had just, this man of God, this prophet, had not got into the middle court before God told him to go back. Then go and tell him, it's not going to die. Hallelujah. How do you handle adversity? Beyond much more. This is one of the scriptures. When you say God can do exceedingly more abundantly, then we, we can even ask or think according to the power that works in us. Ephesians 3.20. This scripture was confirmed in the life of this man. Because this man didn't ask God to defend his country. Look at what God told him. He said, God, God said, I will defend this land. I will deliver you. I will defend this city. God began to give more promises. Even beyond what the man asked for. If you can pray, just like Ezekiel, if you can live your life the way Ezekiel, God will do much more for you. Hallelujah. Long story short. You know, you know when, I, I saw, when I initially saw how this man wept, let me just tell you a rumor. And I'm, was this cry of unbelief or of faith? You know why this man cried? The same encounter, what we are seeing is in the book of 2 Kings chapter 20. Did you know that this man, Ezekiah, when he was going to die, he had no child. He had no, had no son. Did you know Ezekiah is a direct descendant of King David? And did you know that God had told King David that he was going to give him a son that would sit on his throne? If Ezekiah had died at this time, that would, that the dynasty of David would have ended. So Jesus Christ would not have come. Because Jesus Christ came through the lineage of David. So this man started crying. If you look at 2 Kings chapter 21, verse 1, the Bible says Manasseh, who was the son of Ezekiah, was 15 years. Manasseh was, was 12 years old when he became king. His own son. So if God had not added 15 more years, do the math yourself. 
do the math yourself. If, he had God, if God had not added 15 more years to his life, look at his son. The son that he had was just 12 years when the man died. So that was why the man was crying. He said, God, how will you allow this to happen? Didn't you give your son David the, 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 the covenant that he will have a son that will sit on his throne? Sometimes people go, you've got to tell God about his promises concerning your life. You've got to tell him his covenant towards you to let God you know, do what he has to do in your life. Until God, until this man, you know, you know saw death and God, you know, delivered them from the pit of hell. The Bible says this man began to, he wrote, he wrote in that Isaiah 38, he wrote a psalm for the Lord. Started talking about, about brevity of life. About how, you know, fickle life is. You know, life is like a mist. He said his life was like, a, you know, a frail animal that was being devoured by the lion. This Ezekiah. And when he got to verse, 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 verse 18, he now said, ah, ah. He, 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 at, he said, I know what it for sure. He said, sure, that is the grave cannot thank God. He said, ah, ah, death cannot praise you, Lord. He said, those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your truth. When you are dead, you are dead. I don't care how beautiful you are because in the grave, there's no work for you there. The Bible says in the, in the next verse 19, he said, the living, he said, only the living man can praise God as we are doing today. If you are alive, people have got one of your responsibility, your spiritual responsibility is to be thankful. Give God praise. Give God thank. Appreciate God for all the things he's been doing in your life. Don't arrogate to yourself. All those things are seen you. Uh, it's because you know it. Because you're hardworking. You are beautiful. You have connection. Huh? All those things will fail you. No wonder. The Bible says in Psalm 150 verse 6, it says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. As long as you have breath, keep on praising the Lord. Let's give God a God of praise. Hallelujah. Because God is a good God.